Welcome back. Well, we hear about liver problems and realize that the liver is a very important organ, but what it does, what it does, and but what does it actually do? Great question. And what happens when pets have problems with it? Our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, is in the studio to tell us what you need to know about liver conditions in your pets. We're all walking around with a liver and it is quietly doing its job, you know, and our, our dogs and our cats are doing the same thing. And we don't really think about all of the important functions that it has, and yet it is there and it's doing some important things. And a lot of people um, may not be aware of some of the similarities that pets and people have, but the liver is located just up underneath the ab uh, uh, rib area, underneath uh, or at the front part of the abdomen or the uh, upper part in a person, and it actually has six different lobes. It's very similar to how it is in people. Uh, the dogs and cats have a gallbladder just like people do, and that's a, a um, digestive fluid that uh, collects and then flows into the digestive tract. So digestive tract and liver are connected. And some of its main functions are important in understanding what can go wrong. Uh, it removes toxins, it filters the blood. It basically is like everything that we eat or drink or take by mouth, it has to go through the liver. So it's like customs for travel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it also makes some very important products. And I'll be mentioning some uh, problems that happen when a protein that it makes called albumin isn't there because albumin helps as a transport through the bloodstream it also helps keep fluid in the circulation instead of leaking out. So very important functions that the liver has. Okay, so I can imagine when something goes wrong with the liver, it's very serious if you don't have that kind of filtration system in your body. Yeah, absolutely. So all of these different important functions, if something goes wrong, it's going to create then problems in that regard. So we need to make sure that we know about um, the things that can play a role in uh, liver conditions. Uh, it can be affected by inflammation or even infections. As I said, it's connected with the digestive tract, so bacteria can climb up the biliary tract or the bile duct. It also can uh, have bacteria arrive at the liver and cause infections there too. There are many viruses that can cause uh, hepatitis in uh, people as well as in pets. Some of them can occur. One of them is one of the things we vaccinate dogs for. But in any case, the bile system, as you can imagine, this fluid flowing through the gall gallbladder to the digestive tract. If there's anything that's blocking the way, a blockage can cause problems too. We've talked about how cats are particularly predisposed to having fat get deposited in the liver if they stop eating for any simple reason. And that then can domino into a very serious condition of liver failure. And just like any organ in the body, it can be prone to developing abnormal cells or cancer. And while we talk about cirrhosis as being an alcoholic uh, kind of issue or alcoholism kind of issue later in life, scarring of the liver can occur due to any changes that occur in life, uh, whether it's uh, dietary, whether it's just age-related changes, and cirrhosis or scarring of the liver are other things that can happen too. Okay, so that's what's going on, on the, the inside, but what mm -hmm. are some of the things that pet owners should look for on the outside would they give them clues? Because again, the pets can't talk, or if yours does talk to you, <laughs> you know, but they don't, they don't talk, so how do we know? <laughs> we talk, they talk in a different way, but some of the ways in which I think people need to know um, is that there's not really ways that the liver will complain a whole lot on the outside. Some changes in appetite um, are some of the things that people notice the most. Pets can be lethargic when they have this, but if there are some signs of uh, the bile obstruction, for instance, there can be some yellowing of the skin. Not so much that you see it easily in the skin, but you'll see it perhaps in the whites of the eyes or maybe on the inside of the ears. That's called jaundice or medically icterous. It doesn't matter what it's called except one of the signs can be that yellowing. As I said, one of the proteins that it makes is albumin. Albumin is responsible for keeping fluid in circulation. What happens when it can't? Well, fluid can leak into the abdomen. Oh. We see this in other countries where protein deficiency exists, but the distension of the abdomen can be a clue. Many people would think that's weight gain, but it's actually fluid that is building up there. And of course, mm. because the liver is detoxifying all of the things in the bloodstream and intoxicated behavior behavior or not feeling well can occur. That can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, things that you wouldn't necessarily say are liver, but are certainly a situation where the body isn't feeling well. Okay, I'm going to ask you about treatment, but I do have another question because you mm -hmm. know I'll pop one in there. Sure. Um, so our, our liver and kidneys are things that, feel, so does the liver, does, the, does that have an impact on the kidneys when the liver isn't working right? Could it, could it affect the function of their kidneys as well? Yes, it does. So um, a protein that is eaten gets turned into ammonia that has to be to detoxified by putting ammonia together, making urea. Urea is what the kidneys get rid of. So there is a relationship between the two, but, but it's not so much that liver failure can cause kidneys kidney diseases, but some of the things that cause liver problems can also cause kidney problems. Okay, so let's go back to um, the liver. So what is mm -hmm. the treatment for that? Treatment depends certainly
certainly on the specific cause. If we know what that cause is, whether it's bacterial and we manage the bacterial issues, we can um, handle uh, through treatment directly like that. Sometimes it's about using um, inflammation reducers, but we mostly need to make sure that the liver is given the optimal condition to do its job the best way it can. Optimized nutrition, therefore, is part of it. And many people have heard of milk thistle as an herbal supplement. The active ingredient that, uh, that helps protect liver cells is called acidenosil. And this has been purified in, in prescription form to be able to have a supplement that can help the liver work better. But there's many other things that really depend on the specific diagnosis. And while these are uh, supportive cares, there are specific care that, uh, that are require the diagnosis first. Okay, so pay attention to your pets. Notice those small changes, right? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Dr. Visser. If you want to contact the pet vet, Dr. David Visser himself, you can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PETS-VETS, or you could always shoot him an email at michianapetvet.com. Comcast.net. We'll be right back.